All right, welcome to the Community Service Advisory Board meeting Thursday, May 18, 2023. I'll call the meeting to order, 604. Emily, you've got attendance under control. Mm -hmm. Let's just do introductions since we're on TV or streamed or whatnot. I'm Art Dillon, I'm the current chair of the committee. I'm Brent Murphy, member. I'm Karen Shoup, Town Council Liaison. Emily Loader, Recording Secretary. Roger Shabbat, member. Alex Marshall, member. Uh, Todd Souza, Director of Community Services. And you just, Sorry, I'm late. that's all right. You're just in time for introductions. So I'm <laughs> If you wouldn't mind just stating your name for the record. Sure, Amanda Doherty, Great. second alternate, I think. <laughs> All right, well, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. Great. All right. All right. Uh, everyone had a chance to look at last month's meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. Any questions? If not, I'll take a motion to approve. Motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you, Roger. Any discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. I'll open the meeting to citizen comments. Danny, we'll close that. Thank you. <laughs> and citizens are welcome to attend. If anyone's watching this. All right. We're down to item five, town council recommendation review. Up to Todd. Um, I just want to block, just take two minutes to do a couple of quick updates. We were, there was conversation prior to the meeting starting, but just I want to say it on the record. So two meetings ago, town council voted to change the beach fees. Um, they are changing Saturday and Sunday fee in the month of July and August to $30. So that was voted and approved. Um, so we're working through all the stuff on our end, signage, the outreach. Um, we have our staff each summer training next Monday, uh, Tuesday evening. So we'll go over that with them and kind of how to address and some, some tactics for them to do it with. That's for anybody who doesn't have a pass. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah. resident, the pass for residents, the pass still stayed the same at one four. I'm sorry, $40. Mm -hmm. And for a non-resident, it still stayed at 150 So those weren't adjusted. Um, they just did the the, the the peak Saturday, Sunday for weekends. Um, and uh, uh, and then again, in the previous, we had mentioned that we were, this group, we would look at the fees and structure over the summer to talk about environment as one of the goals, but we can go over that. So that was just a quick update so everybody heard it. I did send an email out this morning about the invite to the All Board Summit, which will be here on June 8th, uh, led by SEDCO. Um, and uh, if you are interested or plan to attend on that flyer is the link for Eventbrite. You just click on there and sign up and that registers you for, for the uh, the summit. So I did it this morning and it took me. You know, and I didn't literally... realize you had to register. Yeah, I just said... two clicks. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that was set up by Sedco. Uh, Karen also mentioned the ad hoc committee apps for the advisory board, the community center process um, are due by, if anybody's interested by June 7th. Uh, again, quick application by the sounds of it. And um, there are two seats. Oh, it's a reserved or registered from reserved reserved for members of this board. So if there, the, the goal is to get two people committed from this board to serve on this ad hoc. Um, I know Alex had asked me the question about the commitment, um, and uh, this is different from the previous board because the previous board was all in. We're in the middle of, um, and I'll, I'll kind of go back and forth there, but we. Review. We had five applications for um, submittal from firm for consulting to do the feasibility and design study. Um, myself, two other staffers, uh, Autumn Spear, our planning director, um, Karen Martin, Sedco, and then Alex being um, doing a lot of the kind of bid opening stuff in dealing in Portland. And as a member of this board, he came over last week and sat with us. And so the seven of us reviewed um, the applications. And without going too much detail, because a lot of it is still kind of being worked through, we decided to interview four of the five. So on the 31st, we're interviewing four of those firms 
Um, we sent out four questions for them to kind of deal with. One is we really want to know the project manager and we really want to know if he or she is different from the project manager, but the person that's going to be doing the uh, public outreach. We want to make sure that these folks can handle Scarborough um, in the sense of being able to communicate, follow through, and really listen. And so it's really important to get a good leadership team. Uh, we, another question was, tell us how you're going to build consensus, right? Because a lot of things we're dealing with now is just how people feel and what they want. So how do they can, how can they build consensus and get us to the end of a path and give us something to talk about or hopefully vote about? Um, another question we asked was regarding um, bring us a project that you have helped design, get through the approval process, is now in operation. We want to see that you can take us from the beginning to the end, um, and, and especially one with a pool, right? This is the number one thing in all the survey work. Um, I can't remember the fourth thing right now. Um, off the top of my head, and then we'll have, we have some other background questions for each of them as we were reviewing the application. So the goal is to then, um, hopefully within the next month, have an agreement with somebody. So when the um, appointments committee gets the ad hoc committee going, we're ready to go. And that's where it's kind of leading into going to be a little different than the previous process is that there is a uh, professional team that's going to be at the ad hoc committee's will to work through. And I, I envision there's a back and forth, like, hey, we're working on this. How do you feel? More of a checks and balances and getting community input. So I'm excited about that process, especially where I saw what happened in the first one, which was all positive. This is just a different vehicle. Um, so I think it's, I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, uh, yes. I don't want to interrupt you. Yeah, there, there is another committee that we reserved a seat for this committee on. So when you're done. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll update you. Yes. So that's, all, uh, yeah, that was my last update before I get into this stuff. But so go ahead, Karen. Um, so I think we've talked about the open space plan before. That's something that I've been working with the Conservation Commission with, and we're trying to get it done through, we're going to probably have it funded. I think actually through the planning, just normal budget, then an open space plan. And so the Conservation Commission wants to create an open space committee, which I guess actually did previously exist, maybe like 20 years ago. And so as town councilors, we don't really know what that should look like. So we're going to appoint people from different committees to create what they think an open space plan should look like to accomplish the, the 30 by 30, if you know what that is, and serve 30% of your waters and lands by 2030. Um, so this committee would be someone from like community services, conservation, probably sustainability, uh, Scarborough Land Trust, Friends of Scarborough Marsh, there's probably a couple more. And it's just bringing people together to think about the best way to implement the 30 by 30. It might be that we create another committee out of that, or that committee says, this is the plan. We really don't know, but the, generally the Conservation Commission is kind of driving the force behind you know, an open space plan, committing to 30 by 30, and then creating an open space committee. There's many different types, like every town has like a different version of what an open space committee looks like. And so we, like, I, I, I can't decide. I don't know what the appropriate one was. So we're gonna have the experts from all the different boards come together if they're, and it's, if you're interested, if you think you want to bring it, you know, bring some value to it, there'll be more information coming. But I just, if the open space plan and conservation and connectivity and things like that is something you guys are interested in, um, and you just want to volunteer and give us more of your time, we'll take it. Well, I think sometimes, again, an idea of potential commitment time yeah. would be helpful. I mean, I'm going to plan on applying for the ad hoc committee. Right. But I don't want to do that too. I mean, I, I I mean the reality is I'm in I'm in meetings every week. So I can't be a liaison to a committee that's meeting every two weeks either. Like I don't know. I feel like Todd might know better what the committee would look like in the long term, but it, it just depends on the timeline that you guys set. And that's really the right. first priority, right? It's like how fast does something need to happen? And so I know that there's there's so much good work going on right now between all the committees. It's 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 exciting and exhausting at the same time. So I'm in a in a lot of them, but it feels like finally we're getting into a path where everybody's at least talking the same thing and then um, starting to do the work. So I, I'm not sure what the final product was. I think it's something once you guys get going and talk about, because um, it's really going to be the difference between, I think it was three years ago we did the last open space plan. And, and remember, Rick, when the last one was done? I don't. Yeah. Um, 
the, the challenge there was is that we have so many different vehicles now than that group did because of just social media and outreach and 24 if it's 23 years if that's the number more experience and knowledge and so like um i think really the group is going to have to figure out what their outcomes are want to be and then the timeline will have to be set off of that because i think then that'll be realistic and just like anything else summer beginning of the school year for a lot of people is like super busy time so i mean i i, I would be respectful of that too so but well, that's good news so and a question on the beach feeds which i do yeah. is it going to be 30 from nine until four three four yes yeah, so where was going to start it no, all so, right so till... what they chose was they're leaving the five o'clock buffers alone okay so okay. the, the nine to three that is fifteen dollars presently that's where the thirty dollars will go and that again only saturday sunday in july and august so yep. we just had all new signs made that shows the thing the whole day so Good. we'll get working where this got passed i mean we made a recommendation i think it was two years ago mm -hmm. we made two recommendations yes. and, and basically got shut down yeah which is fine mm -hmm. um but this then this all of a sudden came up without any recommendation or current recommendation did it just go through in one meeting no notice to <clears throat> yep. citizens yeah i feel like we i mean to be completely transparent you can watch the the, the yeah. meeting i think we had a break at nine o'clock and right before we got back from the nine o'clock break um i mentioned that john Fucci is the chair of finance he just was staring at this going why have we not raised the beach fee in forever why can't we just do this right now why don't we do something quick to do this um and so i think i've been clear that i do want to raise fees it was not the most democratic process and someone did vote against it just because it wasn't where in my mind it's going to be really big money for this and i think that's what he was looking at is the bottom line of how can we make some more money real quick Mm -hmm. Because also, I appreciate, I'm sitting in those meetings fighting for everything in Todd's budget, <laughs> like nonstop, being like, we want this, we want this, no, we need this, we need this. And I think that's why, you know, we're trying to be a little more creative about how to make money and still kind of accomplish our goals. Yeah. yeah. I mean, personally, I don't have an issue with it being increased. It was how it comes across as being done. Yep. Because every action has a ramification where we've already bought signs and we're going to yeah. have to redo it. We, I don't, and I don't think that was on their radar. It was, we were updating all of the fees. So the whole fee schedule for the town, for Check every for department, yeah. we updated all of it. Yeah. So it was like a multi-page document with multi, you know, a lot of the fees going up. And so I think in Clucci's mind, this was just one more fee real quick that he felt like we justify raising. Yeah. Um, and I, after the meeting, I did say, I'm worried about Todd's employees and the repercussions that they're going to face at the gate with 30 because there wasn't a lot of discussion. Yeah, and, and again, we're really going to work with our employees. One of the things we started just in our staff chain, our staff, up to, uh, excuse me, uh, agenda is just to give them, you know, give them some soft skill answers. You know, again, residents, it shouldn't affect us. Just go get your season pass. Yeah. So we'll open up the beaches Memorial Day weekend, and then we're going to spend the month of June really trying to push it publicly. That don't be surprised in July when you show up. Like that's our goal: is four weeks of just blitzing to not have that happen. You know what I mean? So we'll get through it. Verbal okay. judo classes. What's that? A couple verbal verbal judo classes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we've, we've got a nice mix of staffs this year with some senior people coming back some some people that have retired and look for some summer jobs and so they we just hired a gentleman that managed the marriott in portland for 30 years so we've got some skilled people so the goal is to um put a younger you know employee with a, a more seasoned person and hopefully deal with some of that off the bat so like, you'll, we're feeling pretty lucky with the staff we have so far so um so i'll hop right into if there's no further so i sent you two documents um and uh Try to just capture some of the things quickly because I know. Um, so that first, you get two things in front of you. One is this uh, the implementation objectives that have the. I think I captured everything that was on the list. I put the, the list within my office. So um, you guys had broken down in the last meeting. 
um, things for immediate, kind of that zero to three years, and there was six there, and then kind of that planned developing stage, that three to five years. Um, we have five articles, five objectives there. Um, and just so you know, those little numbers on the side, like the 3.2 and the 1.2, those directly correlate back to the goal in the master plan. So you can go back to the, the master plan piece. And then, uh, and then this document you have um, is those six goals that the um, Barry Dunn had, had laid out. I just put them in a different format and took the objectives and made space and kind of put some action items next to them moving down. So um, this was more of a me sheet than a you sheet, but I wanted to show to you how I, I think my staff is going to work through once you guys set your final objectives that I would then tweak and then work through. And like, again, some of these things are going on. So um, I'll go over this, the first objective sheet, the zero to three there. Number one was support community center development process, lands from that goal 3.2. So under here is, a, and again, it's already listed on the website, but understand how we've gotten to this place. So when people ask the question, I think the pro, any process gets slowed down when people don't know the back history, right? Asking the same questions. We've been asking this question since I think 1978, the timelines, Karen article, we've had a lot of that in there. So really just continuing to educate people. So when somebody hears about it, um, and the town's done a nice job about keeping stuff on the website. Um, again, asking me membership from here to join and support the ad hoc committee. I think that's a direct relation because then they have a conduit back to, to you guys. Um, I put down advocate for uh, community center site selection and funding and to support the action. Um, I'm not sure how this will end up going once we get down to the final budget process, but um, I thought I detailed pretty well in my presentation regarding why we wanted to do it. Um, gave some examples around some of the school's challenges as far as questions. You know, you can't go fast. If you don't know where you're going to go, the final site build can't be done. You can't get a final budget. So getting a site is really important. Um, and mm -hmm. I did speak with Karen Martin and Autumn after our um, meeting last week looking at the firms. They're going to do some digging into some town-owned properties. And when they are going to think about us, when potential developments are coming in, because they all have to do community good parts of things. So they're they're on the hunt too for us. So um, so I think that, and then ultimately continue to educate the public along the way. Uh, we hear this word transparent all the time. Um, I think that's important, but we can only be transparent when people want to know. And so being able to share the information all the time, uh, and, then, and then at some point be able to say, this is all we have. And so... Um, I didn't get into the, you know, the piece will go, I think we'll have to kind of lead that. Um, so that, that's the first one there. Uh, the second one was around maintenance facilities. There's a lot more um, items in the master plan regarding that. Uh, again, the biggest one is advocate for fiscal support of parks and facilities maintenance, uh, evaluated, evaluate use of contracted services, and then at, uh, advocate for additional staffing levels. Um, again, a lot of this stuff comes right out of the master plan. There are things that we've talked about. Um, and so uh, I think those are the strongest pieces because again, um, the master plan, I would say probably 75% of it is about maintaining and ensuring what we already own stays in good working order. And then how do we do that? Uh, and, then, and then part of it is preparing for what's next, if, if there's a what's next, you know, but as, as different things come about. Um, number three was, uh, again, uh, paraphrase a little bit here, but beach environment, resident priority. I think that was kind of the feel of our conversation is how, when we're looking at what do we want our beach environment to be, um, putting the resident first in some of our decisions. And so, um, here, uh, develop goals and objectives to drive evaluation and decision making processes, right? Um, policies and price dictate who goes where and then they go someplace. Um, review policies, rules, and ordinance. Um, compare fees, rules, and operations to surrounding communities. And then plan future maintenance investments and improvements. Um, so, those are all kind of things that, that drive how the beach operates. Um, and that's something that you know like this group is committed to work on. 
uh, volunteer recruitment and computer partner development. Um, so things to get done would be develop a list of community organizations so we know who are our potential partners in town or um, assign, uh, assign members from this committee um, to, when I say boroughs, to the sections of town where, so if somebody wanted to say, oh, I, I have a direct access to, you know, Alex in Blue Point, and, you know, little, if somebody lives in a certain area, great, they could do that. <laughs> Sign people. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to a couple different um, each groups this this spring so far, and and a lot of things they're addressing are things we have to address in the off season. We can't hit in the middle of the season, and so I said I've been at, trying to let them know that we we are going to increase our outreach as a board and as a department. And and to me, the outreach needs to be both ways. Like I need to be able to listen, but then also report back out. And so having at least one or two meetings a year with groups. Um, because each section of Scarborough is a little different. So I think that's an important piece. Um, uh, oh, that be, but develop short, short term outreach strategies in and out. Like, how are we going to do this and when it's a regular annual meeting? Um, and then create an annual conversation, Fallon's local meeting in each area. There's certain ones where, um, talking with the uh, group at Pillsbury Shores, they have concerns about traffic and then I heard park area and um so uh we had paused that for example we paused that project and i told them and i would hold a meeting in august before so let's get the summer running hold a meeting with that group in august before a lot of those seasonal people go home you know because we hold a beach meeting in january a lot of the summer residents have gone so when we were working on herd park i think i did it strategic i think i did one during the summer one right after the new year and then one again in the spring is to try to give everybody an opportunity to now with all the technology since COVID, it's a lot easier to do a hybrid meeting. So I think that shouldn't be as hard as it was in the past to make sure we get everybody's opinion and be heard. Um, I was very generic and basic on number five, programming development target, and I've already started talking to my staff so we can pull stuff together. But we, we emphasize zero to six age group. We talked about... Um, adult programming and then the master plan went back it's labeled as young active and senior and then that outdoor recreation and nature for all and um and so the, the goal for us would be to evaluate the existing programs um numbers of and then types of in those demographics so we we have a lot of that data from the master planning piece um we joked in the master planning the last year and a half wasn't considered because they weren't they weren't complete or audited so we can add that data, which we've added a lot. Um, I would say a lot of new programs, not necessarily in all these areas, but um, we can work on that project list. Um, and then number six, um, uh, staff professional development. And that was kind of, and I don't know if I captured this one well enough, so I think this can be a point of conversation, but the notes that I made here were staff outreach and areas of interest. Um, for me, I think that it's kind of a retention thing. If a staffer's got an interest of something they want to learn or get certified in, if it's a benefit back for us, then it's it's a it's a two-way street. Um, leadership areas is typically to a benefit the department um, as well. And then also create space for staff growth, but more importantly, um, striving to create future managers. You get staff. We don't have a lot of positions in our department where there's two or three of them. There's one programmer here, there's one manager here. So my personal management strategy is always treat them and train them as best we can and, and hopefully you treat them so well they want to stay but they're, they're capable of leading and so that's kind of how we're going to start looking at it. continue with some of our younger staff we've got a lot of uh you know to put an age on it but we have a lot of 30 somethings that they're at that point in their career they're like okay what's next and so we want to got to be able to support them and that's yeah that benefits us as well uh the thing that i just realized i don't think i captured um and Emily may remember better, but we also talked about when we start to incorporate volunteers and build that out, being able to train them as well. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's might have made an initiative in that section. Was that in that was number four, the volunteer recruitment. That was a whole separate um category. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, okay, that, yeah, yeah, that's right. That should have been the train. This should have been so I'll add a bullet number four about training and um mm -hmm. and number four and a community partner building. Thank you. Um was the same thing like developing a community partner list, but developing a list of volunteers and then coordinating with them to help them run programming. Yep.
Um, so before I go on the, the back page, does anybody have any thoughts or questions or things that kind of high level stuff that I missed that we talked about last meeting? Well, yeah, yeah, yes, I was on the phone for half of it, but yes. so far, so good. Okay. <laughs> thank you, thank you, and I appreciate you doing that last night. No, that's fine. <laughs> Again, this is this is kind of that high level stuff that you know, I'm not sure we, we've got to leave an agenda how we get through this next side a little more difficult for me because again the plan developing three to five years one of the things that i heard and karen and i were talking about this earlier before everybody was coming is one of the challenges i think we have right now where there's so many moving pieces and people keep getting caught up was with things like where they were talking about the school site what's going to happen with the other schools if you build a new school and it really slows down what's in front of us because yeah, you can have general conversations about it, but you're never going to get answers until you know something's going to happen. Because you're not going to spend days and months and week researching what these other three schools could be if this is not moving. As soon as, let's say, this school gets passed in November and boom, it happens, then the next day you repurpose a new committee and you start looking at those. But to have it slow things down, and so I was having a hard time here because a lot of it depends on what's next, right? Is it approved? Where are we? What resources do we have? Um, so first one was uh, trail development and connectivity improvement. Work with and support transportation committee in their efforts. I'm actually attending the transportation committee next week. Uh, they invited me because they're talking about um, one of their things they forgot last year was, you know, uh, bike racks and where we have them. So we, staff went through it, full inventory. We have a couple spots where we don't have them. So I'm working on some spots we have two, we'll get them moved and then add ones that we don't um, we don't have. Uh, and the places we don't have them was Town Hall and Public Safety Building. And, and it shocks me, but we don't have one in Memorial Park. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it, it just, what's that? Which, which bike park? rack? Memorial down behind. Yeah. The three yeah. space on campus do not have bike racks. Um, it's totally surprising to me. So we have one bike rack at we have uh, two at the co-op, co-op, excuse me, co-op, co-op, that next week we'll get moved over to Memorial Park, so we'll have one there, but Memorial Park, we're looking at, um, with some funding we have left over from a, a pickleball kind of master plan project over there, um, I want to put a pad, put a different bike rack in and get a bike, you know, they make a, a bike pump that you can pin right to the, to the cement, mm -hmm. um, and uh, so that's kind of redo Put that amenity over and then that portable bike rack can get moved to one of the other places. Um, it's amazing how expensive they are right now. Um, so, uh, and then evaluate alternative funding sources, guidelines, and timelines. So, I've asked my staff in our last meeting um, and ongoing is as we identify things, there's a bunch of trail stuff that's popping up. And even if we're not prepared to apply, put it in your timeline. So, we need to start a queue like, okay, that trail, that trails grant is due in October of the year. Let's let's go look at the old information in the summer and confirm that it's going to happen. So we're not built or capable enough to like react in a month or something like we gather data and do that sort of stuff. So trying to be a little more proactive and aware of those things. Um, number two is field development and potential expansion. Um, and this will give us enough time to work through, but ensure existing facilities are operating at maximum capacity. Again, using what we have to speak. And then target expansion opportunities. Um, we've already started kind of some of those conversations, um, looking at some of our fields, reconfiguring. Uh, reconfiguring, you know, how much, um, you know, how many times they're being used, you know, and to be able to go back and have that data to say we only use that full size baseball field nine times, you know, so we could inconvenience you on campus nine times, and we could turn that baseball field into a grass surface where lacrosse, field hockey, football, we're all dying for space, you know, that graph, and it's cheaper to maintain. So re-analyze kind of what our existing stuff is and how we're using it. Um, because the sports that were popular way back when, you know, way back when, but when we built all this stuff, it's not, you know, lacrosse wasn't a thing back in the 70s, you know. Um, so um, um, 
So that's kind of moving there. Program develop target. Uh, this is where we had put the aquatic section. And again, um, support development community center with a strong aquatic component and then evaluate potential partnerships. That second bullet, um, I think if we could we could do that piece earlier, look what's out there. Um, so this one should also include um, the surrounding town programs and facility offerings that they have to see what is being used, how much they charge, how much it costs so that that can be evaluated to include in our programming as well. Surrounding town comparison. Yep. Yeah. There will be, I, and I should say, I'm assuming because it's one of their components, but um, during the ad hoc process with a consultant, a, an economic study of all the surrounding impacts, how far, what the reach is and what our competition levels is. Um, but I'll make sure I add it here too so we can highlight it and then reference back to that um, in programs. Or I think that one more specifically, like if we're looking at uh, specifically aquatics, if we know that like the Scarborough swim team goes to the South Portland Community Center, what can we do to bring the Scarborough swim team back yep. to Scarborough? Um, I don't know how do we word that. Um, focus. I'm just making my. I'm talking a lot here. Apologize. Focus, bring people home. Yeah. Focus on our uh, programs and athletes. Using outside resources. Yes. It, just on that point, not yep. that we want to obviously, we don't want to discourage businesses that are in Scarborough, but there are people that can't. I'll, I'll give my own personal example. My son goes to swim time, which is here in Scarborough, yep. but they have waiting lists and it's not always the ideal schedule. So yep. I'm having to look in South Portland and Cape and things like that. Yep. So not that we want to impact businesses that are in the town, but I think looking at maybe talking to people, um, to citizens of what are you having to go to other towns to do, not just from a rec center perspective, yeah. but even from a business perspective, yeah. what do we not have enough of, but then we can serve you here. Yeah. Uh, general services having to go outside of town. Yeah. Okay. Um, Again, staff development uh, and implement staff plan, uh, evaluate status and immediate staff goals, uh, outline existing needs and target future growth. I think the staffing plan is gonna be important in anything we do, whether that's adding new programs if they're not volunteer or partner driven, um, or if more facilities are being considered. Um, and if it's not a contracted service, then what is the staff impact and how much can we handle? Um, that's going to be extremely important throughout the community center ad hoc committee is we're not, if a building were to be open, it's not going to come without adding more staff. It's just, it's just not. And so people need to understand that, that operating budget. And that's why that's one of the five key pieces for that committee to work through. Because mm -hmm. um, I think that was a real challenge for the library in the middle of their process, which they didn't have an operating budget to say, it's another million dollars, five hundred thousand dollars, you know, to keep this going. And so I think that was a place for people to question. Um number six, ice rink pavilion. And Karen and I had an offline conversation after this one. So I think when we get into the conversation part, um so uh I don't know if I captured it well, but evaluate potential sites for ice rink development. And I should have put indoor or outdoor or covered, you know. I don't I don't know that it was specifically an ice rink, but I think it was in a large outdoor pavilion that multi could multi-purpose could be used. So it could be used for an ice rink or for other stuff. Okay. Uh, purpose. Like its sole purpose was not supposed to be just an ice rink that you couldn't turn it into anything else. Right. Okay. I'll flip-flop those and I'll move ice rink as part of the um evaluate options and styles of ice rink kits develop maintenance plans to increase time and days of use covered lights design um because i remember the beginning of the conversation we were talking about should we be operating our ice rink for the amount of time and effort we put for the 10 12 days we have um but it's really important to a lot of people for that short period of time and so then the the, the conversation turned to how do we better serve and what it would take to do that. And so this came kind of out of that list. So that's kind of like maximizing those fields to say, yeah. okay, if we reconfigure, we can get 30 days of use versus 12 days. Right. Because I was trying to go back to Karen, Karen can chime in 
the conversation we were having afterwards because it wasn't anything about ice rink in the master plan, but when you say it like that, where it was about maximizing our resources that we have and not whether what the choice could be simply, and I'm not advocating for this, we don't do the ice rink because it takes too much time for the for the effort. Mm -hmm. Um or it could be here strategies to to do better, have a better facility that meets the goals and allows my crew more time to do other things and not waste the resource for for that effort. Um, Think, so that would fit into the master plan. Yeah, I not, think the concern that I brought back to Todd was specifically, I didn't see it in the master plan, the word pavilion. Yeah. So my concern was, it looks like we're inserting our personal preferences into this if we're not seeing it. That was my concern was, I didn't know where the pavilion came from. And I just sort of said to Todd, where is it mentioned in it? And I... Knowing the people on town council, what I don't want is to be in a situation where them go, well, did you just create, you know, is this just what you want? Yeah. Or is this specifically what they recommended? And I think that's why I went to Todd, because I was like, I'm having a hard time, like, figuring out where this is in the plan to say, oh, well, the experts say you should do this. Because we have had conversations over the years about uh, how great, I mean, the, the ice rink is not doing great. Right. And, um, and so I think that was the only feedback I had was just the concern that it wasn't specifically spoken about where uh -huh. I feel like they would have spoken about it. Yeah. Maybe. Where I see it is inserting the word pavilion is part of evaluating and reconfiguring land fields right. to its maximum, yeah. such as creating a pavilion would maximize X, Y, or Z, you know, it would afford yeah. those opportunities. So, so ice, I, sorry, ice rink was mentioned, right? Yeah. So ice rink I don't was, know. was a part of the master plan, well, the ice rink, not to build a new one, but the use and the challenges of it in the maintenance section. So it was yeah. identified, yeah. for lack of a better word, as a burden, how much time and resource. Right. So this. And I think that's that where I was like, okay, so <laughs> they identified it as a burden. And now we're coming back saying, oh no, let's improve the burden and then add something that they didn't recommend. I'm just being devil's advocate right yep. now of the perspective of the council coming back on. I didn't read it. And that's kind of where I was like, I, in my mind, as someone who does not do this, yeah. I was thinking, oh, you're gonna pluck something out that's right here in front of me that I can clearly see was recommended. But that's just me where I don't, I haven't done so these things seen before. as a solution. Right. Okay. It was an ice rink though, like facility for hockey. No, uh, no, no. I mean, in the in the survey work, if you go back in the data, they talked about an ice rink, but not like not here. I mean, I think the, what I'm what I'm hearing, and I think it would be easy, easy an uh, an explanation to council if it was brought up, and I can rework this section and we or we can talk now and further it. But I think it goes back more into the in in the master plan people were talking about getting more winter access to trails and cross country skiing and more snowshoeing and that sort of stuff and in my mind that's my staff to do that if they weren't spending so much time on the ice but the skating was still important to people so the, the theory is how do you maximize that and again the pavilion um i think maybe the if we're going to we want to put the pavilion in there uh, Pickleball came up 6,000 times. Uh, event space and birthday space came up. That's where I think, yeah, I think I might have been the yeah. catalyst for the pavilion. Yeah. It's just knowing the, the winter recreation side yeah. challenges yeah. that you're going yeah. through yeah. and a way to mitigate that is to cover it. I think a pavilion's a great idea. Yeah. There's one in my hometown yeah. and they have events right. all the time there. Yeah. That's why I was like, it's not in there. Why yeah. isn't it in there? Yeah. I, you know, I think the people that would come instead of Thompson's coming. Yeah, yeah, it covers it covers a lot of the different bases. So that I'll, are, that are mentioned, but. I'll I'll kind of re kind of rework that for you guys to, to kind of match it. And, you know, it's it's more in the solution. A pavilion is a solution to some of the challenges, right? Yeah. And it fix probably four or five of the objectives. Yeah. In the yeah. in the piece. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so that's a high level of just kind of quickly zero to three and three to five capturing things. And I think a lot of these things we can start working on right away. Um, if if you go to the action sheet that I put together, this is just, and again, this is not done. This is just me trying to get something in each spot for you guys to look at. But so here, like looking at goal one, continue to improve organizational efficiencies. Those are the objectives that are directly from 
for master plan, which the number then coordinate to your objective sheet implementation you're trying to work on. So for example, number objective 1.1, Continue to enhance and improve internal and external communication regarding department activities and services. Excuse me. And I put action items in there. Inventory park signage and appearance for intended message. We started that at the beaches because some of our signs are outdated and not, they're not doing what we want them to do short term. Um, two, match marketing resource type to target demographic. That needs to be an ongoing work for us to make sure that um, target partnerships increase improved service. Program facility resources ongoing. So I kind of tried to put a time frame there. Um, and then ultimately, we would continue to work through the sheet through all of them. And then I would assign staffers to um, different sections. And my ultimate thought would be is to, you know, assign it to somebody that's in charge of that. So if we're talking about marketing or signage, I'd put, you know, Jill, but then I would assign a parks person with her. You know, that way they're getting input of things they hear from the ground level um, and, and try to get, you know, uh, two different people from different service levels to kind of take a wider perspective on any of these. You get two programmers together and they get brainstorming, but then, you know, I love when, you know, Nicole comes in as a mom and getting all the phone calls. She's like, I need that answer. Someone's going to ask me that question. You don't have that in the flyer. And so sharing it with the different people, we try to get a lot of those kind of answers. So. I think mixing the, the targets to, to um, go with other people. So yeah, so that's kind of listed out there, continue to improve the program. So delivery was a goal. Third one is improve and expand facilities. Um, address the ADA concerns for number four. Five was increase financial opportunities. And then six is the goal is improve maintenance and operations. So those numbers are throughout your implementation objectives. Um, so I think what you picked flows back into the master plan, feeds very well. Then it's just upsetting the objectives. Um, you know, if we could go back in time, um, this will be much better next budget process because we'll have all this to work from and actually work on CIPs throughout the year and budgets. Um, so some things we've kind of we'll be able to check off this box through this budget, and then others we're going to have to kind of forecast and go forward. So. Um, but I'm happy with the things that we have in the CIP this year, which will, which will move the needle on some of these things. Um, uh, so, can I ask a clarifying question? Yeah, go ahead. So, with all of the things that we had developed between the immediate and the planned, yep. you were looking at the feasibility of being able, actually able to accomplish these things, which we already know match up with the master plan. Yeah. Um, but then we still then need to further this down to pick out of these objectives to give to the town council? Is that correct? I, or am I on a I, totally different? Uh, my, uh, no, I think that's still, I mean, I think we're still open for interpretation. Like, cause I, and that's why I left these high level because um, if you guys were to come back and say, listen, we really only want to focus number two, six, you know, then that's a different conversation. We can dive deeper into that. I was trying to answer the things, Mr. Bless you that I think that, I mean, honestly, I think between our work over the year and my staff's work, we can probably move the needle on all of these. But I guess I'm saying that maybe the reason that we were doing this was ultimately to submit our goals to the town council for next month. Yes, I think, well, that's ultimately what we have to do, right? That's that's. Are we submitting this whole thing? Okay. Or is, does this have to be narrowed down oh, further? I, no, I think we are submitting the whole thing mm -hmm. okay. after, after tweaks. I mean, like because of the, the budget, there's things that we're not going to be able to do. It's mm -hmm. But it's putting it in pace for next budget mm -hmm. for consideration. Mm -hmm. So and I, and I try to be, and again, we can wordsmith. This is really going to be, it, you can take anything you want off of here, add anything, or change the words because this is going to be coming from you guys. I was just trying to put what I think we can accomplish in these objectives here. If there's something in here that I didn't and you guys want to add to, then that's a conversation we can have, and then I can answer pros and cons or challenges. But this was just kind of a broad-based thing that I think that I think we can accomplish in the next 12 months. Um, and if, and if it's things that um, 
you know, it's like number four on volunteer, develop short-term outreach strategies in and out. You know, that's a conversation, right? That's a, a subcommittee, that's staff, that's people working this fair. Okay, how are we going to communicate um, in, this, in creating that that mechanism um, and then putting it out to the public? Um, yeah, so I think a lot of these we could set timelines to, kind of like we were doing our deacting plan. And then, um, but if there's things that, again, wordsmith or things you want to add or tweak, please feel free. Well, like I like everything that we came up with, and I, I think this is a really good plan. I'm just, I'm, I'm not sure what now that we do that we have this nice piece of paper with the information on it. Yeah. Like, is it now going to town council? And then we are taking stuff to help you like check off doing some of these things. Like, what is the next step? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to speak for, for you guys. In my mind, I think, because, I, and I don't want to misspeak for council either, because I don't really know their thoughts or what the objective is when they get it. But, my thought is they're going to get this and want to look into it, you know, and probably have us. I don't know if they're going to invite us to come and talk about it. I don't know if it's going to be a workshop. Like, I don't know what the next step on their end is. I think that personally, there are things on here that I could have my staff working on right now, but there's a bunch of stuff on here that I think at a future meeting of this board, we can say, okay, these are things that we can take on and should take on, you know what I mean? And then, then to, you know, Ellen is always talking about um, subcommittees, you know, but maybe more of like, okay, three of us or three, you know, are taking it on and I'll, I'll have Nicole be your liaison if you need resources on our end for Gal, you know what I mean? Or, you know, working on beach fees, I'll get Steve to be a liaison because that's, he's living it right now. And so we can pick off those things and develop how do we take this action plan and really incorporate you guys into it depending on how much we want to take on so um, i feel like part of it is going to be what is this cost like they're going to want to know so when i look at like number two the maintenance of facilities i, I wonder i wonder i don't know yeah. if we should if we should be a little more specific or i don't th i don't we can't and that's why i don't know if the master at plan point, is like saying I mean, maintenance of facilities, I feel like, is an ongoing, always an issue. Yeah. And, so I'm, and when I think about it's the, it's, yeah. in my perspective, I'm like, okay, well, what is the priority for the residents right now when it comes to maintaining facilities? Where in Todd's mind, it might be the shack that's dilapidated because yeah. it's awful, where all the residents don't care about the shack, they care about the other thing. Um, and that's where, I mean, and that's why I don't, that is a vague one. And that's the only one I look at where I'm like, yeah. Well, what are we? I think know, that's maintain? a future. And I feel like that's more of a, like the future work that we should be doing, right. drilling down into all that stuff. Yes. I feel like this document should just be a communication to council. Right. This is what we're feeling at this moment yeah. in time are the priorities, and then we start to ship away at them and maybe get more detail of what we thought. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure they're going to have a preference of what they what their priorities are as well. I know I can tell you right now what, what I like yeah. and what I don't, yeah. or like what I think you should do, but. Well, and that's just it. It's you guys make a priority or two and say, okay, I want you community service to focus on X, Y, or Z. That's mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. And but I we're trying to identify and make a recommendation from that 300 page document. Well, we, sh we should also be working with, with Todd's people on, on maintenance of some of these uh, areas where, where they feel there should be some improvement so we can put it in the budget and help them get yeah. that through. Yeah. And I think that's what I was trying to get, you know, with my statement before is that if, if we had had this seven months ago, we could have built some of this stuff in the budget. And so that's why when we did our quick budget highlight was there's things in there that I put that are very generic. Like I put $50,000 in the operating budget, I mean, the CIP to address the interest spot list, to address ADA issues. And there's a lot of it in there. Mm -hmm. And so, that at least when we identify something and get going and be able to start something and not have to wait a whole calendar year. Um, you know, some of the, the crack ceilings or some of the maintenance work. Uh, and a lot of the stuff in here for this year, I don't think is a heavy financial burden because my goal here is really to evaluate how do we get this group, the in and outs, I think what's going to be important, right, is getting to the people in the Blue Point area and getting six, eight general questions that we're gonna ask every neighborhood, right? What are the most important things? If you could change things now to be able to start getting that feedback so we can build live time 
action plans to say like, you know, okay, we have that grass space with the old swing set that we took away at Blue Point Park. If you could do anything to that space, what would you want? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, those are the type of things to build. And then it becomes a financial, right? Mm -hmm. People may say, yeah, we want a pavilion, we want pickleball, we, whatever. You know, it could be a million things, but if we want to get down to that, the one thing I am trying to not have happen is that we we need to get a big list of things that people want to do. We prioritize them and then we go versus every time we want to go change the color of something. I, I, we can't move that slow to go say, hey, you know, um, let's go talk to Phil Briggs. I'm going to go put a new deck in at Herd Park. It's like it's just, certain things have to just get done. But if we give people the opportunity for input and know how to get to us, then we should be getting that you know, more often. So that's just kind of how I think that we could kind of do both things this year without a big financial commitment. Um, but and council can ask for whatever they want. They can assign that after or say, you know, here's our priority, here's our thought, or can they come back with more information on like the parents' point? We'd like to have more information on maintenance of facilities number two. And my answer would be, I need six months. I need six months to interview people, go to meetings, that sort of thing. And we could we could lay that out for you. So if that drives. And and who knows, maybe five counselors love the idea of a pavilion. I think it's a great idea. <laughs> and they say, you know, get, get some data. We can do that. Right. That's fine. Yeah. Thank you for putting this together, though. That's yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. really well organized. Yeah. It's easy to read. Yeah. 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 Just a That's few true. more tweaks. We'll have a little yeah. packet. We can right. present it to town council. And... Yeah. So my thought was that I'll, I shared this with you. I'll drop it into your folder. And then I don't know how we want to tweak or you know, like again, whether that's something you guys are going to go through tonight. Because when is it due? To, next month? Is it due next month? Yeah. Like, do June we need to make, next. like, what do we need to tweak? Do we just need to make it look pretty? Like, I could do that. June is next month. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And hearts over the eyes. I don't think there's yeah. a meeting before that, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. It's just that. Uh, it's right. It sounds like someone else. <laughs> I, I guess I think it's a little tiny bit of wordsmithing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, spiffing. Adding in a couple of things we said, and then yeah, yep. yeah. So Todd, I think it's already in the folder. If not, I will put it in. There. Okay, it thank you. Now. Okay. Yeah, feel free to manipulate or move things around. So, yeah. do you, Karen, do you want to relay that we'll have something in June? Yes, I'm trying to find. John has an active spread excel spreadsheet of his whole council meetings and what he wants so i'm trying to see if it's on here yeah. um i know he said june I'm trying to see what he has the other question to ask him would be is getting it but what's the expectation to get it is it so he has you on the july 19th meeting july 19th Okay, so the the and this is what I'm looking at right now is he has a spreadsheet of what he has for the agendas coming up, and right now on July 19th, we have two things, and the second one is Parks and Family Master Plan non-action item update. Okay. Yes. No. Thank That's you. Right. Our next meeting is set for July 20th. Oh. Is it really? Yes. Well, we should have a June. We don't have yeah. a June one. We don't have a June. No, we can, but we don't have one planned right now. Gotcha. And I won't be here for the July meeting for this. I cannot be here either. But you can be at the town council on Wednesday, right? Yes. It's just the Thursday, so right. I'm yeah. for you. Yeah. What if you met in June and not July? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Totally up to. Yeah, because we were told for June. And I think that was the original plan yeah. with, honestly, with the school stuff, yeah. everything uh, yeah. has gotten pushed. So a lot of people will cut to me. Well, that, that was one of Ellen's comments too. I don't know if you saw oh, I just email. emailed her back. I did. Oh, you know, the site? About, you know, do we mention the potential of the school site? It's not enough land. 
Yeah, I, I haven't seen it. It's not. And so briefly, my response to Ellen was that it's just not enough land because part of it is going to be like a barrel pool, like a substantial part, you know, like the, the track. And then, um, so there's 25 acres. They need all of it. If that deal falls through, right now they're saying that the Downs will still sell us five acres, which I don't think is enough to do anything with. It's pretty small. Right. So that's the current situation. So I mean, honestly, like the conversation we had last night was five acres, like what fields? I mean, honestly, you can't put a community center there. You can't put an aquatic center there. Yeah, it's just soccer fields. But it's not uh, the size of like, Well, and so water. we're still negotiating the deal with the Downs. And part of me is saying, you can't, you can't even do a community center with five acres. I don't think so. You can. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you could do a community center. We talked, I think we talked last time, with three to five is the minimum. And it also depends on the amenities around it, right? Like, because the last one we talked to, the, you know, we talked about the downs, they had a right at the head of the green. It was beautiful. But my concern, there was no parking. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So if that. there's a business next door that's closed at night and weekends and you have that parking, like, so what's around it? But yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's on the smaller side of, I think, five to 10 was the recommendation, but that's also on amenities. Um, and know, part of the deal with the, with the Downs is they're supposed to reserve land for us for a community center as well, but that expires next year. Yeah, right. And, and yeah. I don't know. Thank you all. Have a good evening. And they're building, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. They're building so quickly. It's, it's so, so, so what is the area that we need? For communities, well, and again, that's part of that's where the ad, the ad hoc committee, and it really depends on how big of the building, how what the traffic flows are going to look that's like. True. So part of that is, but and like everything that's decided that it, needs to be in it exactly, too, right? What the program yeah. of the building is, but when I asked Barry Dunn during this process, he's like, I've seen it as small as three acres, you know, usually more between five and eight, and ten if you're talking adding fields, you know, because you know. So it's it, South Portland's, like including their parking lot, because they're by the school, so they don't know, have they fields. Have so yeah. Wow. So they don't, their location works for them. Yeah, because when the kids leave in the night, they get all that parking for them. So again, exactly. that's why the location of what's yeah. next to it. I feel like there's a small, but we would need bigger. Even sure. that's not big enough parking either. It's no, chaos. Yeah, so I've been no, there a couple of times. Yeah. yeah. The school takes Especially, yeah. especially yeah. with the skate park now. Yes. Right across the street. So just so we can fit out again, try not to. Um, Emily's question or Emily's uh, point around the July, do we want, or uh, whoever said, sorry, my head's like I said, my head pounded. Um, do we want to look at a June meeting rather than July? That was just mentioned to be able to, or do, or do we think this can get finished offline, shared and approved and get the council? I personally think there's not like significant changes. I think we could do it offline, but I'm being selfish because June is a disaster for me and I already had July on my calendar, yeah. but that's just I, me. <laughs> I think it can get done offline and maybe Trish, you or, or and me could meet with Todd for mm -hmm. an hour sure. sometime next month. Um, can you just, Karen, can you do us a favor and just confirm that that's even, that that's that's the day he's still targeting? And if you want, and the other part of that question would be is if he's expecting members to come and present, like how, what is John's expectation for right. when that's being delivered? I have what I would like it to look like, but I <laughs> yep. mean, you know, I yeah. want you all there sitting at a yep. table, like part of the conversation. Yeah, yeah. but yep. it's it's oh, all God. about John and how much we have. Yeah. Our meeting last night was almost till 11 p.m. I, okay. I think if we get the packet together, just submit mm -hmm. by July 1st. What, what uh, my Give question is to the town time. council, don't they have this two summer uh, months, the first Wednesday of the month, and nothing, and this is equal I, to the second week or the third week? I of, guess of it's the, month. the third. So town council meets the first and third week. I guess and I, and that's right, but not in, in the summertime. They usually go to so one meeting the in, the, of, in July and August. Yeah, and they're, they're just doing week. the 19th this year. Oh, they are. Yeah. yeah, they're doing the third. Right, isn't that what you said? The third, yeah, meeting. The second meeting of the month is the only one they're having in July and August. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. And that the first one falls right next to Fourth of July, so I think that's yeah. probably why they're picking. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. No um, one wants to work that week. No. <laughs> so I guess I actually brought up. Thank you, sir. I I actually brought up item six without reading ahead, but um, <laughs> yeah. If the three of us, I can put in like for decision, say like the three of us will, uh edit as needed and then have ready and then it needs to be submitted to 
you, Toddy? Where's, it, where's it going? Well, I would I would submit to town council. I would submit to Karen. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I would send it, it to me come, or Don, like, whatever. However, whatever. Um, so like when we finish this, okay, like here you go. Who's it going to? I would say John Anderson and me. Yeah. Okay. Send it to, yes. Yeah. Just okay. CC me in yeah. it so yep. I can know what went through. But yes, it's your yeah. document. To it's really yeah, because John does the agenda, so it's really just the agenda. Okay. And then again, once Karen gets those, confirm the date and what the expectation of the presentation is then. So yeah. July, so if it is for July, then July 1 or-, or That's our yep. goal. If, yeah. if it's June or differently, then we can evaluate as needed. Okay. Yeah, I mean, if it's after 4th of July, no, it's fine. I don't know, but give them a couple of weeks to- But it would be nice if, if even if it was June 30th, because you, you, they told you June. Yeah, <laughs> and you met you met their timeline. I, I like that, <laughs> but you guys did the work. Yeah, I was just on July first. Okay, so then our next meeting busy. would stay the the Ju July twentieth, and then for the yeah for yeah. the time being. Yep. Emily's not here. I'm not here. Okay, so I'm just put another thing. So Todd, that um this document is in the drive, but it's as a PDF. So anytime that you send stuff out, can you send it as a word so that it can be edited? Yes. Okay. Yep. I did it as I will what I'll do, Emily, is I'll probably you and I can talk offline on how because sometimes when I send word, I get all these because people can't open it. It's like different formats. Mm, different formats depending on their you computer. Save it so. as a rich text format, the RTF. You can open it anywhere. Okay. If that helps. Uh, yep. I'll help you. Okay. <laughs> what I'll do is, Emily, here, I'll send it to you and then you can post I'll it. I'll fix live it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just send it as a PDF because I know everybody can open it and yeah. then I don't yes. get it. Yes. But I can't edit it. So, yes. Yeah. Send stuff to me and then I'll yep. save it in the drive and take care of it. Did you fix the format else. or you want me to send you the Word doc right now? I need a Word doc because you said there's a, I only have it as a PDF. I'll send it to you. Thank you. Perfect. So I guess Guar, with that, with that comment of of knowing that Emily and Art on here on July, I would maybe we put an email the an email to them. Holy smokes! Uh, meeting reminder out towards the end of June, because if all of a sudden two more people can't show up, you don't have a quorum. Yeah. So okay. just as a you know maybe third week in June, then hey, don't be able to meet on July twentieth. If you can't make it, we need to know because. It would be upsetting if three people came. In. Are we able to? I mean, I know we don't have everyone here tonight. Are we even able to say now, like, hey, is everyone available the following Thursday, and just kind of determine that now, or do you want to wait to, to see? I always get with emails. You're like waiting for everyone to respond and doing Tetris with schedules. So I figure if we're all here now, maybe maybe that would be easier. I mean, that's a possibility. I wouldn't be able to be here. That's the 20, well, it was just an example. Yes. No, yeah. no, just an example. You can say any other date. Just 20, that's the 27th of July. Yeah. Rick, you won't be there on Thursday either. Go ahead. Well, of the summer concerts that oh, okay. That's right. Uh, <laughs> popcorn. And ice creams. Blushes. Yes. All the good stuff. another summer. night of the week. You can just send me an email then. So, I'm obsessed with schedules. So that how about, no, so I, was, I get it. I'm with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> how about when I send out the, the minutes and the agenda this evening, I will add in a line, you know, can, do we just want to say, do we want to push it to the 27th or is that not available? Well, we are still missing two people. So you guys so you can't just can't make Thursday's place. period? Concerts in the park. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we could do one or two things. Correct either confirm, the, confirm we have a quorum or look at a different night for like that one month right for yeah. july look you know i think it might be anyway. i think it might be easier to change the night than here back to see if people can make it i think that, well i mean yeah. it could no, be no, either no, way no, but it's more, it yeah. more efficient <laughs> yes yeah, yeah. yeah right yeah. let's have it on the 19th let the town council come here there you go <laughs> <laughs> or do we want to meet like after town council so like the following week 
Uh, so that would be the 26th. 26. Anybody available? I can I'm, I can make it work. Yeah, I can do yeah. that. Yes, yes. I don't I don't uh, know about M yeah. I am. I'm in. Yeah, I'm sorry. We got enough to see. Trish. Yeah, so July. Well, once once you find out from the people when they can go, then just if you email them and say we so. need to change the meeting to July 26, are you available? Like to yes, yes, I'm doing yeah, that as right. well. I'm asking okay. about the people yeah. that are yes. in the yeah. room. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are you? Can you make that? Yeah. I, oh, I'm retired. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do what I want. <laughs> well, 26th. 26. Yeah, because the 27th is a Thursday. You're busy then. <laughs> You're making Buffalo <laughs> slug. <laughs> so I booted it up my schedule just so. Perfect. <laughs> Outstanding. Good. So um I'll change it then as proposed to for the 26th. Um, and then we just need an agenda. Okay. The other thing we'll need to do is as soon as we confirm that, Emily, make sure we let Cody know because the website already has it listed. So it's up to change the mm -hmm. header page and the calendar. Okay. Not that we have a big crowd, but you never know. That'll think. be the night for citizen yeah, comments. Yeah, yeah, Jack. <laughs> yeah. I think once we get into the Community Center conversation. Hopefully, we'll start seeing some. Hopefully. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, agenda. The last thing for that meeting. So, we didn't hit item seven. Request edit mobile cash can. Well, that's the minute. Sorry. That's the minute Sorry. Yeah, no, item seven is Sorry. confirmed the next day to set the agenda. Too many papers. We're, yeah. ahead, of, we're yeah. you're ahead of schedule. Yeah. Don't, don't blow this roll. <laughs> okay. I, at the last town council meeting, uh, Tom Hall, the manager, always gives updates. And one of the, up, this was Pat last month, one of the updates he gave at the end was that discussions about dogs at beaches has started. And I'm waiting to see if people trickle down to this committee to realize that that work generates out of here. Um, because personally, uh, it's I, I do think it's a problem. And in the last six weeks, I walk on town property and I have been jumped on and packed by probably five different dogs. Uh. And I'm just like, I can just now I'm starting to really appreciate because I don't go to the beach because it's too crowded for me. <laughs> and I think lately, like, and then honestly, I think the Higgins Beach stuff is sort of the whole trash can, I think, sort of like pulled the curtain back on some of the big fish issues that are going on down at that beach. So I think you're going to see that one of my priorities is about beach enjoyment and mm -hmm. things like that. And, and, that's list, and that's listed as a goal. I mean, is, is there anything, was there anything in the parking lot from last meeting that you guys dropped off that's pressing? I mean, because one of the things that would probably, if we dedicated a whole meeting to, would be brainstorming the beach environment questions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I think that is a whole lot. You guys could spend the whole hour and a half just talking about what the challenge, forget, forget creating solutions that night, but just identifying right. challenges. Mm -hmm. You could probably list those things out and then work on action items from there. And I, because part of it is, again, fees and policy dictate how things go. But I think that if, if you guys could list out what, you know, um, where your challenges I, are. I think that would be a, a good tentative uh, agenda item, depending on what kind of response we get from town council. Oh, that's good. Point. The week, the week you could get work from Wednesday, right? I told Nikki you well. Yeah. I mean, my yeah. imagination is they're going to tell you what they want to do, and yeah. that's going to be the marching orders. Well, that's what we're going to put in. Hey, me on team. <laughs> have you started to hear or has anybody started to hear complaints or issues about dogs dogs yeah i mean i know that ellen consistently expresses concern in this committee yeah um i personally 
and not pleased with what I see, especially like I went to the beach and the piping people have their, they have the signs up, yeah. there's piping clover fences and the dogs are, there's a puppy off leash. And so that's why I continue to advocate for like the park ranger. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, have, I have a feeling that some dog owners are not bringing these issues to our attention, like Higgins Beach, because they don't want to have dogs excluded. When I saw the pictures of Higgins Beach and what's going on down there, I'm like, how come we haven't heard about this? I don't think they want people to realize how bad it is down there. And I don't know. I also think there's a strong, I, and I don't have the data to back this up, but for every person that's concerned about dogs, there's probably just another one that supports a dog. And that's mm -hmm. why, you know, I think that, I think, taking the approach of identifying what the challenges are. Mm -hmm. And if that's, I know we talk with the club of volunteers all the time about simplifying our language. Cause we, uh, one of the volunteers had a conversation with a new dog owner that had just gotten a dog and uh, she didn't understand the rules. And as soon as the club volunteer pulled her over and explained what was going on, she's like, thank you. We want to be good stewards. Mm -hmm. I think most people want to do the right thing. Yeah. Um, so I think identifying the challenge is then trying to come up with solutions. Cause like right now down at Higgins, um, there are things that I think, I don't know if it'll get supported, but things we can do to streamline. Like we've got rules to start April 1st, April 15th, May, like it's you gotta fair. have a, you gotta yeah. have a cheat sheet to know when you can go yeah. where. Yeah. So maybe things about, you know, looking at consistent dates and, you know, that sort of stuff. I, I think those are things that we can move the needle with without upsetting the apple cart, right. without an opportunity, yeah. you know? Yeah. My parents I, I live think, on Higgins I, yeah. and they don't have a dog, but and have never had issues at the beach, thankfully. Yep. They've had a house there for about 10 uh, years. I think but the town council needs confusing. to look at ordinances <laughs> to pertaining to what's going on at Higgins Beach and just look at what you have or what, what what's written. Right. And bring it up to date or, or change, you know. Because seriously, uh, right now we have eight nests on that beach yeah wow and 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 all of them uh have four eggs in each nest and that's that's good too so that uh, if if we continue doing that it'll be the best year we've ever had and uh, so uh, you got to give credit to the volunteers out there and uh, and pay attention and, and uh, audubon coming over now there's only five nests that are exposed and hopefully we're going to get the other two or three once by the, the, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, usually like a week or two yeah, established yeah. before they but, uh, close them. You know, and and to me, what it tells me, and I've been involved with this thing. I was on the beach uh, Tuesday morning because you know, uh, but anyway, um, it, it's the work of the volunteers and being open and willing to show what's going on and what we do and. Talk to the people, you know. Now there was a sign issue that's completely gone the other way, and and and, and it, it's stupid what's going on. But um, uh, if we can keep the dogs out of there, we're going to have a bumpy year. And that's not counting the lease turns haven't showed up. Now we've seen a couple of them around lately, like last couple of days. But once they come in, the lease turns. Last year we had over a hundred nests. Oh, wow. Shirts. wow. So it's getting to be a very popular place for the birds. And, and I always want to when, when, we get, when, when we get into the process, just remember too, it, it's we have three beaches. And so it's, you know, we have individual different different characteristics and different challenges, Adam. But I've always tried to advocate that our rules are very similar. So you don't have to get mm -hmm. a book out. Okay, here's the rules for Higgins versus. Yeah. So that's a challenge. What's the rules in Old Orchard? Is it dogs are not allowed to beach after five till after five, right? In the summer? It, the, the old, old Orchard, from what I understand, took the same ordinance that we have. The, they're, they're, all, they're following sky rules, what I'm saying. Yeah, and we're the last two communities that I know of that are allowing dogs yeah. during during the, the peak plover season. Mm -hmm. So uh, like, but again, it's, it's a challenging conversation. So I think that, um, Art, right, I think you're right. Maybe maybe the agenda is uh, discussion of, you know, beach environment. And the caveat is, you know, unless we get an action item that needs to be addressed from council from the... I think you should just put dogs on there. Maybe someone will actually show up to the meeting. Yeah. 
Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Um, all in favor of no? All in favor of no? <laughs> Come on, let's liven this up a little. Yeah, yeah, it'll get lively. Really. Think, yeah. Do we still not, do we not need to do our board goals? Um, or considering we're like already halfway through the year, do we just like skip it and do it next year? I, I, uh, How does that work? I mean, that I'll be quiet because that's on you guys to figure out. I, I mean, I think that honestly, these working through this. No, say that's can we goal? just say that those are our goals? Like, I think once they get stamped off from council, a good yeah. portion of it is our goal. That's what I feel like yeah. these are your so, goals that you pulled out. Yeah, of goals are objectives. Yeah. Yeah. You could change that title to goals and objectives for yeah. you know very easily. Yeah. 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 Okay. So maybe when accurate. we connect with that, we can do the same yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. Then it cool. ties into both things. And so we want to talk about beaches for the uh, July meeting. Depending on the outcome of the town council meeting and directives, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So beaches for now, pending other stuff after pending, July. Pending any action item. Okay. So the, the just on the dates because we can adjust. So that. Okay. Yeah. So you got the town council meeting. If you guys commit to talk on the 20th, you, Trish, and, and Emily, because the 19th is a council, you'll know if there's any action items given to you. And then we usually put out the agendas like the Thursday prior to our next meeting. So that the next meeting is now the 26th, so it'll work out perfect. Yeah. So if you guys get yeah. together and chat yeah. about finalizing the agenda on the 20th after the 19th presentation, we'll still be on schedule and be able to give enough public yeah. notice for that change. It actually works. That's good. Yeah. Anybody have anything else they want to bring up? Well, I'll take a motion to adjourn then. Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Roger. <laughs> second. Rick, second. All in favor? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Let me hang on a second. Let me just start with the